Welcome to To Inspire. Today is a special day. Today we have Nicole Ryan. She's a full-time fashion, lifestyle, and keto blogger living in the gorgeous state of Arizona. As a busy mom of two, you can catch her running to and from sports practices, scheduling photo shoots and local meetups, creating content, sharing the latest fashion trends and keto finds on her social accounts, baking and having family dance parties on the regular. She has proven that there is no slowing her down. She swears her energy is fueled by her keto lifestyle and, of course, bulletproof coffee. Uh, Nicole's true fitness journey began in 2019 when she discovered her favorite obsession, Burn Boot Camp. Nicole, welcome to To Inspire. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Dennis. Happy to be here. Well, we're excited to have you, too. So we're going to get right into it. And uh, this is our one-year anniversary edition, and we're proud to have you on, on board here, and we've been waiting to interview you for it for a while. Yeah, very excited. So tell me, Nicole, tell me how you got here. What was kind of your motivation to get started on this journey? Sure. Uh, yeah, great question. I feel like I get that pretty frequently, too. Um, you know, living a keto lifestyle really has been something that you hear more often uh, now, in addition to paleo and some other, um, like, trending low-carb lifestyles. But, you know, really, it started being at the gym. Um, I've, and for what it's worth, prior to me jumping into keto, I've literally never limited my carb intake. Okay. So, like, I always ate the bread, the pasta. I mean, growing up with, you know, a, a family where my mom is, it's like pasta, bread, mashed potatoes, everything. I mean, so it, it's one of those things, too where I was like, I don't know, like, how do you cut out carbs, right? But I heard some people talking about it, and, like, really, so I started asking some questions, like, well, what are, you know, I'm a very inquisitive person. Hey, well, what, what is the benefits of this? Like, why in the world would you ever want to stop eating bread? Why would you want to stop eating pasta? I mean, so, and when it's just, like, repeatedly everyone saying that the benefits are just, like, more energy, you feel better, it's less bloating, um, helps with weight loss, too, and although I've never been you know, a very large person. I've, I've been pretty lucky in terms of genetics. Um, you know, after you have some kids, you have some extra stuff hanging around. Sure. And I think we're very critical of ourselves, but most importantly, just wanted to feel good. I wanted more energy, you know, no more midday crash, like two o'clock, one o'clock rolls around. And you're like, oh my gosh, I need a Red Bull. Where's my bang? Yeah. Um, where's my coffee? You know? And so that yeah, was really like the biggest driving force. And of course, if you can shed just a few extra pounds of some things that you have hanging around, I think anybody's on board with that, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a little nicer when it's natural, but those those energy drinks, I understand when you need them. Yeah, yeah. So if you can yeah. find a way to get to that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So do you I think? think um, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say too. I think um, that once I started to like my body started to kick into ketosis, which some people are familiar with the term, maybe they're not. Um, but really when that happens, it's like, you just have this natural energy that's kind of just leveled out. It's not like, you know, you have that energy drink where you get the jitters, you're like ready to go. You're, you're good for like the next hour and a half, two hours. Right. And then you kind of crash and you're like, I need a nap. Right. So, um, that's one of the things that I love the most about making that transition is just being able to have some steady energy consistently throughout my entire day, you know? I I agree. I completely agree. What would you say, what do you say, like, as far as people saying uh, with keto being a fad diet versus it being something long-term, what do you, what do you think about that? Sure. You know, I've actually had some of my closest friends tell me like, well, you know, this isn't a forever thing, right? Like you're not going to be able to do this for the rest of your life. And I'm like, well, first of all, you can't challenge me to anything because <laughs> if you do, <laughs> I will not lose. Right. Um, super competitive, right? But I was like, well, why not? I mean, it's there. It's not a fad diet. I mean, it's certainly a lifestyle. If you look at it as a fad diet, you're never going to be successful with it because everything that you've dropped, everything that you worked so hard to achieve is just going to come back. I mean, and you will gain a significant amount of weight. It's kind of crazy to like wrap your brain around, okay, I'm going to have a diet that's high in fat, right? Low carb, moderate protein, but you know, when you think about just traditionally eating, like, especially when you work out, they really push carbohydrates. Hey, make this a high carb day. Make sure you're getting, you know, meeting your macros. Um, and so when I transition, because I do such intense workouts, I know you had mentioned boot camp and a lot of it is hit workouts. So, you know, you have to 
make sure that you are meeting your macros. And it certainly is different living a keto lifestyle, but I'm still able to enjoy all of the things really aside from like cutting out those carbs, but you make substitutions, which is super easy to do. Um, so I'm really in a nutshell, like able to still eat all of the things that I was eating before, even chocolates and things like that. Like there are so many um, options available for you that are easy to make that are just a few ingredients. It's clean ingredients. Um, and so there is no reason to just kind of look at it as a fad. It's just, it's a lifestyle. I mean, I, you know, I travel frequently. My family and I, we, we try to get out, do staycations on the weekends. Um, right now, you know, we're up north, we're in Sedona for the weekend. And even last night going to the grocery store, you know, ordering off the menu, it's easy to make substitutions for the things, you know, my family isn't keto. I have two kids. My yeah. husband, he eats all the carbs in front of me. And, you know, once you get past the 30 day mark, you're like, I can make it anywhere. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. I love that too, because so many people, I, you know, I, I hate excuses and so many people make excuses for, oh, you know, but you know, when I'm on the road, I can't do this. I remember there's times I've went to Subway and just got the chicken breast in a bowl I mean, I've got, I've had, mm -hmm. you know, just the chicken breast from McDonald's, the grilled it. I mean, so there's ways to make it work, um, but you can make excuses if you're looking for it. <laughs> well, sure. I mean, it, and the excuse is always going to be there. If you're committed, you can make it happen. I mean, I've been there too. Like, hey, we're on the road and there's literally nothing around. I only see the McDonald's. Well, then that's great. I get two double cheeseburgers without the bun. Sounds gross. Like, whatever. I mean, but I'm eating it. I'll get a side salad too. I mean... You know, so you make it work. Right. Yeah. No, I agree completely. So, well, you mentioned uh, Burn Body Boot Camp. And I just, can you tell us a little bit about that and what all it does for women? Because I like that some of the stuff you told me about it prior. So can you explain that to our yeah. viewers? Yeah, I would be happy to. Um, Burn Boot Camp, it's uh, really, I had a couple of my friends that were going and, uh, you know, it was about four months postpartum after having my second boy. And they were like, you should really just come, you know, and, you know, anybody who is like sitting here watching or listening, like relating to, you know, you have kids, you put on a few extra pounds and now the more kids you have, I feel like it's usually the harder to lose the weight, the more that you have, yeah. um, unless you're really lucky genetically. But so for me, they're like, come on, you should just come and, you know, you can do a free two week trial. And I'm like, man, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Um, and I just think I felt like intimidated because all of my friends were in great shape. And I'm like, I'm on the right. struggle bus over here you now, like doing some at home workouts, but not really pushing myself because there's nobody watching or holding me accountable. So I finally went and I was like, okay, after the first session is like, I get it. I get the buy-in. It's like, my husband calls it, we're like a cult. He's like, you guys are like a fitness cult. Um, because there is just such a strong sense of community. And the, the thing that I love the most is it's, you know, they do offer some co-ed classes, but it's mostly women. Um, and what they offer for you is inside of the gym, you know, of course, BC, before COVID, right? We're able to go into the gym. Right. Every state's a little bit different right now, but they do offer a floating floor, um, which is less impact on your knees, which is like totally a good, a seller for me personally, you know, just don't have the best knees and it, it's less impact. So, um, but aside from that, you know, BC again, before COVID, you walk around the room, you give every single person in the room a high five before you even start your workout. Um, the days that we have partner workouts, you know, you introduce yourself. Um, it's kind of a boutique fitness club. So there's limited amount of spots, you know, that you can get to. However, there's multiple times offered throughout the day. They have for free childcare for your kids if you have them. Everyone knows you. The trainers know you by first name. Their energy is like through the roof. They're so empowering. They're uplifting. They offer one-on-one -on -one trainings um, and focus meetings so you can discuss anything that maybe you're struggling with, whether it be nutrition or form or anything like that, you have such a great support system. Um, and so really what their mantra is, um, is, you know, empowering women, um, lifting them up spiritually, physically, of course, you know, mentally, like overcoming those hurdles, celebrating, you know, your milestones, 50 camps that you made it, maybe 75, 100. Um, but it's the sense of community, all the people that you're around that is so contagious that you, like, you don't want to miss a camp. Yeah. If you miss a camp, you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so guilty. Like I, I have to watch the recording. I got to do it at home. You know, it's just like right. that mentality, but it's all of those things in one that just make you feel like something, like you're a part of something bigger and they're big on mindset. Right. So you train your mind, your body will follow. And that's so true. Yeah. 
I love that part. So yeah, you know, talk about having, you really have a support group, but also great accountability when you have a group of people like that. But also the fact that they're attacking the, you know, the mindset with the mental and the spiritual part of it. How does that help you when it comes to, does it help you stay stronger when you're doing like, when you're doing like the training and whatnot, when you have that in, in mind? Cause I love intertwining those cause I'm a life coach as well. So I love intertwining yeah. those things because I think a lot of people, you know, they try down the fitness journey and that's the only thing they worry about, but they don't worry about all these other things that may be coming in and clashing with what they're trying to do with their body because they don't have their mental and their mindset right. So that's, so can you explain a little bit of how that helps? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, before this, I've always been um, a person, you know, even going to like a regular gym, you know, going, I've always been big into fitness classes because I kind of thrive in like that, that, um, type of environment. I like to be surrounded by people. I'm naturally just, I'll talk to anybody. I'll talk your face off, you know? So right. I like to be around people. And so I would say the biggest thing, uh, or the, the best part about burn boot camp is you have someone holding you accountable. The trainers will walk around. They're pushing you the entire way, reminding you like, Hey, you know, remember you guys can do this. You can do anything for 30 seconds, you know, wh whatever our move is or getting through the camps. And of course, when you have someone coming over and pushing you, you know, all right, Nicole, you've got, you got 20 pound dumbbells. Let's go ahead and let's do five reps with 30. Um, you know, like when you have someone pushing you, you, I don't know what it is with like, okay, I got this, you know, you wouldn't normally push yourself to that limit, but you have someone holding you accountable, lifting you up. And it's not screaming in your face, like, a, you know, a typical boot camp that someone might think about, like, get it done. You can do it. It's not like, come on, Nicole, you got this. I know you got it. And you've been working so hard these last few weeks. Like you've been coming. This is, you know, you've been past a hundred camps. Like you got this. Let's just try it. You know, give it all you got. Um, you know, and it's just like, you have that thing. positive mindset and truly it, it's the trainers. I mean, that make it, you know, I, it is a, um, they franchise. So there are locations like all across the U S and even when I was traveling for work, you know, home for me is Arizona, but even going to a few spots in Florida, um, and there's different trainers and while they're still pushing you and, you know, it's just different because, you know, you're like used to your energy and like your home camp. Right. Um, but it is, you know, that's what they always say. And, and that's the first time in my life that I ever actually bought into like, you know, you train your mind and your body will follow. It's totally mental. You trying to stop right now, like, you know, if it's planking, if it's, you know, we're doing burpees, if it's, you know, um, using the burn bars, you're doing pull-ups, like holding, I mean, anything, it's it's your mindset. You can do it. You just have to put your mind to it. Your body's going to give out first. Yep. Yep. That's awesome. That's that, I love that. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. So what are, what are some of the tips that you give people that are thinking about starting keto? You know, I think the most important thing is I'm big on research, but if sure. there's anything, even if you're not that person, you're like, I'm just going to kind of jump in because I have had some friends reach out to me like, you look so great. We love your results. Like, tell me more. I'm like, listen, you need to do your research first and make sure that this is something you're going to commit to because first of all, the keto flu is a real thing. Yeah. It is a real thing. Um, I did so much research. I have some friends that fell victim to the keto flu and essentially it's the flu, right? I mean, you're completely changing what you're putting into your body. And so your body reacts and it's like, Hey, what the heck is going on? You know, you have to kind of transition when you're putting all of this fat into your body, when you're used to putting carbohydrates and burning your, you know, sugar energy a different way. So if you don't do your research, you don't kind of transition yourself into this type of lifestyle. First of all, you're going to get sick. It's not fun. It's legit. And, you know, second, like on top of doing research, you need to stock your pantry. You know, if it's buying a cookbook, you can use Pinterest. I mean, the power of the internet, you can really find anything, a basic chopping list, but getting those things out of your pantry that would normally entice you at least for the first like three weeks is going to be really critical in your success long-term, in my opinion, because if you see like those Oreos, which I love Oreos, it has been so hard for me that first 30 days to give them up because I can seriously eat a package yeah. um, in one sitting. So it's yep. like, I had to remove them from my pantry. You know, all of those things that you typically would love to eat that are sugary, you know, the things that you can't have, like clear them out, out of sight, out of mind, prep your food. Um, it's easier to just grab, you know, some hard boiled eggs, um, some cheese, you know, some veggies, um, you know, pepperoni that you have laying around, like, you know, some lunch meats and stuff like that when you have it prepped in like 
in front of you. So that's my advice is to just definitely do your research, stack your pantry with keto friendly foods, um, and you're going to set yourself up for success in the long haul. I, I could not agree more as far as that goes, because I always tell people when they're talking, asking training questions, asking about fitness and health, I say, you know, you have to know your body, you know, because there's a lot of haters out there that talk about fad diets, about this, that, and the other. If you don't do, do your research, you're definitely going to, you're going to mess up somewhere. And you, if you don't know your body, all diets and all, all lifestyles are not right for everybody. And so that's what I love yeah. about doing your research and checking it out. And, and also, if whatever's in your cabinet, you're going to eat. My nephews watch my dogs all the time. And, and, this, and so when they ran out of all the junk food I bought them, I had protein bars left. And sure enough, I came home and, and they were, they had ate all the protein because all the junk food ran out. So, you know, it's just a matter of whatever's in your cupboard, you're going to eat. <laughs> Absolutely. So how do you do that? You said do your, so your family doesn't do keto. So how does, how does that work? And like, so do you have to have those things for them and then just tough it out or what? Yeah, you know, um, I have like a snack drawer designated within our pantry. So we have a snack drawer for the kids. I have a one-year-old and a nine-year-old. And so, you know, the younger one, like he'll eat whatever you give them. And we try to push for healthy snacks and fruits. But, um, you know, even too, like, it's crazy to think that, you know, you have you can't have a banana, right? It's like, it's, it's a joke when you're on keto, right? Like, oh, okay, don't eat that double cheeseburger. Listen, if I eat that banana, I'm going to gain 15 pounds. Like, it's just, it's funny, but kind of like how things shift. So yeah. getting past that first 30 days is, is a little bit difficult um, because you have to have like that really strong mindset. But now, I mean, it's so easy. Like anything that I make, I, I still make the same things, honestly, but I'll just substitute out pasta or bread, you know, um, for pizza night, uh, you know, sometimes we'll have traditional pizza or I love like a crustless pizza casserole. It's so easy. And even my husband's like, this is phenomenal. Like it is amazing. Um, cauliflower is your best friend when you're on a keto diet, like you could have cauliflower that laughs about everything, right? Yeah, um, yeah. When it comes to cauliflower, because they're like, just substitute, but it's true. I do buy uh, cauliflower rice just, you know, in bulk. And anytime if we're having regular rice or they're having pasta, I'll just sub it out. Um, for breads, I really, believe it or not, I don't even crave bread anymore. Um, I don't even like really want a sandwich, but there's so many different low carb wraps that you can have right. that can fit into your macros for the day, maybe three grams of carbs for the wrap or those cheese wraps um, that are amazing too. Like there are so many different things available that you can just sub out. Even when we have tacos, you know, it's, it's the cheese wraps that you can make into like a taco bowl. So I really don't find it challenging anything that we make even on the fly. Um, it's easy to make those substitutions. My husband always jokes and is like, you are the queen of like creating something out of nothing because the look in the pantry and it's like, oh, we'll just throw all this together, you know? That's you make awesome. it work, but really, truly, really, it is easy. And I've been able to kind of like cut out some pastas and stuff like that um, that we normally wouldn't do for my family since starting this journey. So there are some perks to it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What, what is your favorite keto meal? Anything casserole related is honestly my favorite meal because it's easy to throw together, easy to kind of just throw together. Um, I know I mentioned the crustless pizza casserole and it is a game changer. It is so good. Um, that's definitely one of my favorites. We also recently bought um, an Instant Pot. We got on the Instant Pot train okay. um, a couple months ago and we're like obsessed with our Instant Pot. So more, making these pork carnitas um, in there, you know, we cooked shredded chicken, like anything that's kind of that along the lines of carnitas or barbecue chicken or something like that. Oh. I'm all about it. And, you know, it's crazy. They make a, a sugar-free, as I'm sure you know, they make sugar-free barbecue sauce and stuff like that, which before you transition to keto and you are more aware of reading labels and looking at what carb intake and sugars are, it blows your mind, even in the smallest things, how much sugar or carbs are, are in different things. So, you know, it's crazy. But anyways, that's a whole side note. Um, I know I'm getting off topic, but I would say probably my pizza casserole is my favorite and also a cauliflower cheesy casserole. It is bomb.com. So that's a good one too. Well, I'm going to have to, do you have that recipe on Instagram or anything? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I do. And I shared it a while ago, but I think it's time for a refresh. So it sounds good. I'll have we'll to get it back up. 
Let me know. Yeah, we'll have to definitely get on that for sure. And then, I don't yeah. think it's, it's definitely not off topic about the sauces because it's amazing when you look. There's a lot of sauces that amazingly have nothing bad for you in them. And then you turn around and there's a sauce just like it that's completely horrible for you. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. That's, yeah. And, and by the way, I'm. Once doing, you start reading labels, yeah. That's one of the things that I uh, talk about in the keto book that I have is learning how to read a label because that's, you have to learn what all those things mean, what sugar means, what sugar alcohol means, all those different things. And, uh, but I will say you're also making me extremely hungry because I'm trying to do this uh, different program with intermittent fasting and carb cycling to try it out for a book. And so now you get, you know, I'm doing like 20 hours off and four hours on. So you're killing me right now. So it's okay oh though. God. I'm going to look up the no recipe. We're talking about food. <laughs> <laughs> they say when you're hungry, drink a glass of water. So That's right. I've got a big drink. bottle right here. So. <laughs> uh, what is, so on that note, what is your, what's your guilty pleasure? Uh, well, I love chocolate. So okay. that, I mean, you know, before I started keto, like Oreos, everyone who knows me and my family knows that Oreos are my go-to snack. So now transitioning to keto, I think the way that I've been able to, um, you know, like still incorporate some chocolate into my diet is, you know, if you, the Atkins and even Slim Fast makes um, some like keto bombs and stuff like that. And I make them myself too. They're so easy to put together. They're like free ingredients, you know, really. Um, but chocolate and peanut butter is like, definitely my guilty pleasure but you can still have you know your peanut butter and you can still have chocolate it just has to be the right kind right so but those two together is like a dream come true so keeps you happy right keeps you focused with a little bit a yep. little bit of something good every once exactly. in a while yeah yeah it, you got to reward yourself too right <laughs> yeah because otherwise you're just gonna cave at some point i think right. if you don't kind of like just dabble in a little bit and there's so many different versions of keto out there right there's like Ones that are super strict and they won't even have any kind of butter if it's not from a grass-fed cow and there's dirty, lazy keto. I mean, there's so many different versions. Um, I think that what's important is just finding what fits you and your lifestyle and, you know, what's going to drive results. So, I mean, do what works best for you. Some yeah. people won't have a certain type of sugar, you know, and I mean, uh, being completely transparent, like I don't fall very strict keto diet where, you know, I mean, listen, I'm going to buy organic butter. Um, but it's okay if it's not from a grass fed cow, like my body is still, it, it shows me time and time again, that it still reacts the same exact way. So, um, it's working for me. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. I, and again, good for touching on people have to find out what works for them. That's, I couldn't agree more. So do you have any, uh, immediate or short-term goals or, or long-term fitness goals as far as what you're doing? Obviously you're doing something right. So, uh, just keep on the same path or anything big that you got. Yeah. Yep. I think just staying consistent, you know, um, I really like where I'm at right now from a physical standpoint, um, you know, men mentally as well, you know, you're, it is, you, you notice a difference. If you stop working out, I feel so much better just from like a mental perspective too. Um, your mind is more clear, you're happier, have better energy. And so really it's just maintaining and staying consistent with what I'm doing. I mean, and that's just what I want to do for the long haul. I just want to be healthy. I want to be around for my family and be able to do all the things, you know, my, my son plays a lot of sports, plays just about every sport and being there for him. Um, and our youngest is just what's most important, being able to keep up. Right. <laughs> yeah, keep up the energy without yep. having to, to have too much caffeine to, to keep up, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah. That's, and the thing about that is, the thing about when you, when you talk about that, what really, when we started following you and we started kind of commenting and reading all the things, the thing I love about what you do, Nicole, is it's a lifestyle. We're not talking about, um, you know, I just talked to, I had an interview a, a couple weeks ago and... Uh, Mo talked about, you know, some of her friends wanting to lose like 20 pounds for a wedding and, and, and to yeah. use keto to do that. And she, she warned them what the, the what's going to happen once you do that. She said, no, what's going to happen is you're going to gain it all back. And with you having a lifestyle and using it as a lifestyle, that's what's so encouraging. And that's what people I think need to learn from you. Totally. I mean, it is, it can't be for, it, it has to be for the long haul. I mean, you're going to set yourself up worse than before. Uh, if you think 
if you look at this as like a temporary thing, sure, you know, like the, you can utilize a cleanse or you can, you know, in the past I would do like, okay, but this weekend I'm just going to kind of like do a juice cleanse or, you know, something like that. Um, kind of just like flush your body out and you could still do different versions of that. Um, you know, but that's short term, right? right? We know you go, you know, going into it that it's short term. Uh, this is definitely not something that can be short term. I mean, you're, you're going to freak your body out. Number one, you're going to get sick. Um, you know, number two and number three, like, why would you want to make such a huge sacrifice in terms of the foods that you're eating, uh, to just go backwards? It, like that it literally makes no sense. So yeah. don't do that. Just don't do that. You yeah. know, and that's what I've told my friends too. It's like, hey, if you guys are serious about this, I'm happy to help you with like some meal planning and stuff like that. Whatever you need to help with getting started. I recommend some books and stuff, um, cookbooks that I, you know, use and things that I kind of make on the regular because they're super quick and easy and it allows me, to, you know, more time to do other things. So um, I always tell them like, do your research because yeah. you're going to get sick. And it's just, it's going to be counterproductive. You might see some results. And then if you decide after a month, like, um, I'm all set on this, like, well, you're putting yourself in worse shape than you were before. Right. So what would you, what kind of advice, and you probably already shared it, but what kind of advice would you give like the 20 year old you or 20 year old, uh, if you could go back in time and give yourself some advice about your fitness journey and whatnot? I think, um, if I were to look back, I would want to... I wish I felt like this then, if that makes sense. Like understanding how important even just fitness in, in general, like looking at what you do for exercising your mind and your body, uh, you know, cause I've always been like kind of active. I've always been pretty active, like outdoors and doing things like that, but never to the extent of the workouts that I do now. And I think maybe had I known earlier, I could have set, you know, I could have set my, certainly my, my physique, my body composition would look different, sure. um, earlier on, you know, but I think just knowing that your mental clarity is there too, it's just like, it's such a release of endorphins where all this time, like maybe I've wasted, you know, for sure in college and, you know, your energy is kind of wasted left on the couch, like just vegging out, you know, when you can use that constructively somewhere else. I think, um, maybe there would have been some, um, roads, you know, that I've traveled on differently looking back. Um, I, and really to just know what's like to read labels and food and things like that, you know, the importance of proper nutrition and understanding what certain things are when you look on the back of labels and you're like, I can't even pronounce what this is. I have no idea. Like, just, you know, being more in the know about what's in your food. Right. Yeah. And I, I, that's, I, I always look back to, if I could adjust time when my metabolism was going to completely change, you know, <laughs> cause it used to be, you could eat whatever you wanted. Totally. If I would have just known that what, at that point, that would have been nice. <laughs> so. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it would help you too, you know, obviously like I'm a mom, two boys, so it would help you to bounce back so much quicker after you have kids too, when you're already, you know, there in the first place. So, um, you know, it, it helps you out in many different areas and aspects of your life, but sure. you know, looking back, that's probably the advice that we give myself. Awesome. Awesome. Well, how can everybody get a hold of you and start following you and whatnot? Well, yeah. Um, so I have a website. Um, it's just my name. It's super easy to remember. Nicole Ryan blog .com. Um, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. Um, I feel like I probably get the most engagement, most people, um, popping on Instagram. Um, but you know, I definitely share some recipes there. Um, you know, aside from fitness and all the things that I love to eat that fit into my keto lifestyle, um, I love to shop as many people do. You know, I'm overruled in my house. It's it's all men around me. So playing dress up and being able to have an excuse to, you know, buy all things girly is, yeah. is something that is on the regular for me. So you can find a little glimpse of that too. I love sharing like some of my favorite deals and things like that. So that's where you can find me. Um, and I would love to connect with people if you end up, um, hopping on and checking out my page, be sure to like, you know, slide into my DMs, let me know, hey, this is how I heard about you. Um, I love to keep things authentic and genuine and just build uh, real connections. So that's always important to me. We'd love to hear from you. Well, thank you very much for being on the show, celebrating one year with us. We're so excited to put you on the yeah. cover. And we thank you very, very much. 
Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'm so honored. Thank you for, I mean, I know you have some options, so I'm honored to be selected and um, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, well, we, we appreciate it and it'll be here soon enough. So uh, thank you again, Nicole. Well, and uh, just wanted to say this is Dennis Postema and uh, I'm wanting to help you live to inspire. Thank you.